But the next big invention just might come from right here in the Lehigh Valley. Tempo's Ali Simpson introduces us to a local inventor hoping to make a difference in our lives. That straight line is moving and bending with around the sun, around the earth, around a galaxy. Uh, the oscillation causes the uh, a wave that bends every atom in your body and makes you what you are. Curious young minds listening to an extraordinary mind. When you meet Fran McCabe, you can't help but be fascinated, intrigued, and maybe, if you're like me, a little overwhelmed. And there's low, high, medium pressure tanks. Watching him with these seventh graders from Palisades Middle School, it's as if Fran's mind moves constantly. In fact, he'll say his head's a bit muddled, but these creations prove his thoughts are quite organized. When you first turn it, they all line up. There's the sailboat that works minus the sail, the gyros, rotational devices that seem to move by their own grace, and vehicles which work without gas. Fran has all sorts of ideas. Some work, some don't. But he hopes someone someday finds something they can use. Okay, so that's the basic air engine. You're going to make something out. You're going to convert the idea into some kind of material thing that does work and and people look at it as some kind of benefit to, you know, to their lives. Here's one invention, actually his first, in 1962. Check out Fran's airfoil. To you and me, an airfoil is basically the arm of a windmill. Fran's patented design gives windmills, well, more oomph. It gives us more power uh, from a smaller tube of air. Fran envisions greatness for his creation. He says his airfoil offers four times the lift of your average windmill blade. And get this, NASA has looked into the idea. We have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Lift Maybe Fran's invention could someday help astronauts blast off. But that's not all. So rather than make electricity to run a compressor, to run the machinery, which is very inefficient, we just run the, the windmill, makes compressed air right at the windmill and then supplies it from the roof of a building. Now, from air as our source of power to air powering our cars. You compress the air, you put it into a tank, mm -hmm. and then the tank has valving that reduces that high pressure. Fran says air itself is inefficient, but when we find ways to help it along, air becomes very useful. There's so much power. There is a lot of power in the air. There's more power in the air than there is from a gasoline engine. I mean, a piston that's driven by air pressure can, will give you more power than a piston that's driven by a, a gas explosion. And it's cleaner, correct? And, and it's cleaner. And it's abundant. No gas, just air. And we know there's a lot of air, but probably the big question is, how fast can it go? <laughs> Twenty to twenty-five miles an hour. A few students enjoyed the air car too. But could this really happen? Can you imagine driving to the air station to fill up? Fran says you bet. He suggests using existing pipes and other underground sources to supply the air. Anything is going from a station to a station, like a bus or a taxi then you can fill the tanks up at your station. That idea makes some people gasp for air. Fran admits some of his ideas can be a hard sell, but he remains determined. Plus, Fran's not afraid to branch out. He wants input and information from others. Yeah, and get more help. Uh, just, yeah, broader scale, just get some universities a little bit involved in some of the testing. Just get more uh, minds and, and just, like, more dollars to build things. As for funding, Fran's going after research grants. Plus, some legislators have taken notice. Congressman Greenwood and I have been working with the Department of Energy, both of Washington and of Pennsylvania, to try to get some funding for some of the new innovations that he's looking at. Bucks County Senator Joe Conti believes some of Fran's ideas really could change our lives. Um, how we combined of uh, learning it in school to seeing what it really looks like. People from, come all the way from Russia to take a look at this. I really like the gyros. I, I really want to work with that when I grow up because it, it looks really cool. Um, 
working with physics and all that. And as for physics, Fran has his own ideas on that, too. I'm looking for ways that nature will spin the wheels. Right now, we're using air and electric DC motors and so forth to do this. With his gyros, Fran continues a search for free energy. He believes within everything, there's a communication, a relationship that makes stuff move. You need the, the gyro to spin from some uh, extraction of forces. And the spin of the earth. We all have our talents, but Fran McCabe seems to have a special gift, an energy and intellect that shines through in his work. When I was growing up, there was a TV show on called Mr. Wizard. And I think perhaps Fran McCabe may be the Mr. Wizard of my children's generation. He's a, a wonderful individual. Even if his ideas fall short of funding or fall through bureaucratic cracks, perhaps Fran's creations will inspire future inventors. I saw on a chalkboard that had E equals MC squared, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> pretty crazy stuff, huh? Yeah, but I'm pretty good at math, so I could probably end up figuring it out eventually. He'll figure it out eventually. That seems to be Fran McCabe's lifelong philosophy. For Lehigh Valley Tempo, I'm Allie Simpson reporting.